I am Brother Stephen Elabo, welcoming you to the Life Bible Church, Charlottesville, United States, a place where the undiluted Word of God is being preached. You are about to listen to our general superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, as a comfort to share the mind of God with you and your family. I want you to be ready to pick up your pen and your paper and jot down important messages as they will do you good. God bless you and remain blessed. I welcome every one of you to this December retreat in Jesus' name. As you know, a lot of preparation has gone into preparing for this retreat. In your personal life, I'm sure you are prepared. And in your zones and districts and everywhere we've come from, You've heard the announcement, you have had the publicity. And you know that we're expecting great and wonderful things from the Lord. And I pray that none of us will be disappointed in Jesus' name. We thank you for coming and appreciate the fact that you are here. But now you must make the best use of being here. And all the locations where we are, and we're having this retreat together. I pray that God himself will open the heavens upon us and shower abundant blessings innumerable and unlimited upon every one of our lives in Jesus' name. In the children camp, in the youth camp, in the campus camp, and also in the adult camp, I pray that none of us will be careless and none of us will miss what the Lord has prepared for us. As the leading message for this retreat, since we're talking about readiness for Christ's coming, we're looking at the word of God on the certainty of his coming. He did promise that he'll be coming. The prophecy of his coming. And then what we need to do, how to get ourselves ready by the grace of God and in the strength of the Lord. We're looking at the message, constant readiness for Christ's return. Constant readiness for Christ's return. To start with, you want to understand. You want to be very sure that the word of God has given us this revelation that Christ is coming. If you look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 1, reading there from verse 9, this is when Christ went up to heaven from the mount. And the disciples saw him, and then angels appeared, and these angels declared that this same Christ is coming again. Acts chapter 1 verse 9, and when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they were looking steadfastly toward heaven, because that's where he went, and that's what he promised he will do. He said, I will go and prepare a place for you. He's gone to heaven to prepare a place for his own people. And they were looking up steadfastly to heaven. And they were told the cloud received him out of their sight. And he behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. These were angels. And they announced to them that Christ will be coming again in verse 11, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here? Look, you're gazing up into heaven. This same Jesus, the one who died for us, the one who has saved us, the head of the church, and the one who promised to be coming again and he went to heaven. This same Jesus, which is taken off from you into heaven. The angels did not leave any doubt where Christ had gone. He's been taken up into heaven, but he gave us assurance shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven he repeated that again he's gone into heaven he's coming again there's a certainty 
there is assurance that Christ is coming again. In Revelation chapter 1, reading here from verse 7. Revelation chapter 1 verse 7, Behold, he cometh with the clouds. He's coming. The assurance is there. We're looking at Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2 verse 25. It tells us in verse 25 what we need to do. How we need to get ready. How we need to be prepared. Because it's coming. It says, but that which ye have already. You are born again. You have something. You are saved. You have something. You are sanctified. You have something. You have the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. You have something. You have the word of God. God, you have something. It says, that which you have already, hold fast till I come. It tells us, gives us assurance there. He is coming. In chapter 3 and verse 11, behold, I come quickly. Behold, I come very soon. Behold, I am coming. The imminence of his coming. The nearness of his coming. The certainty of his coming. He says, Behold, stop and think about this. That I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that nobody, that no one will take your crown. It tells us in chapter 16 and verse 15. But looking at this, so you can be sure in your heart that Christ is coming. And as well, the assurance in your heart, the conviction in your heart that Christ is coming, you will see the necessity of preparing for that coming. Revelation chapter 16 and verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. That means he'll come suddenly. That means he'll come unexpectedly. That means he'll come when people are sleeping at night. That means he will come. He'll come without any announcement. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and he see his shame. If you're a believer in the Bible, if you understand the word of God, there will be no doubt in your heart whatsoever that Christ is coming again. It tells us in the very last chapter, chapter 22, reading here from verse 12. Chapter 22, verse 12. And behold, I come quickly. Have you seen how many times the Lord gives the assurance that he is coming? And he's coming very soon. And he says, it is imminent. He uses the word quickly. I come quickly. And my reward is with me. To give every man according as his reward shall be. According to his work shall be. In verse 20, as we close the New Testament. It says, he will testify this six says, surely. No doubt in heaven, no doubt in the heart of believers, surely I come quickly, amen, even so come Lord Jesus is coming. And actually when he was here on earth, he emphasized to his disciples and emphasized to all the people who believed in him that he is coming, but then he said, his coming should be prepared for that those who love him, those who know him, and those who want to partake us of the blessings of the Lord when he comes, we need to get ready. And he gives us illustrations too and tells us what happened before when something like this, a great event, was announced, was prophesied before it actually happened. There were people that were not ready. There were people that were not prepared. And because of that, he reminds us with those historical events in the Bible that he is coming and we need to be ready. Constant readiness. Now that we know the Lord is coming, we need to get ready and we need to have that readiness constant every day expecting the coming of the Lord knowing it could be this day 
that the trumpet will sound. It could be this day that the dead in Christ shall rise. It could be this day that the saints will be taken up away from this earth. And because we don't know when it will come, that's the reason why you need to prepare every time and be ready every time, every day, every moment of your life. In Matthew chapter 24, here is what Jesus reminded us of the event in the past that was announced before that event took place and the people, many of the people were not ready. They were surprised when it happened. Matthew chapter 24, a meeting from verse 34. Matthew chapter 24, reading from verse 34, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all the six be fulfilled. Obviously, you understand, Christ, I've been talking about some things happening. What will happen in the nations? What will happen in various kingdoms? What will happen even ecologically? What will happen to in the surface of the earth? What will happen in every way? And he said, when you see all those things happening, like many things happening in our day, it says, you understand the time is at hand. And it says that all this is happening will show you that that coming is imminent. In verse 35, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour, no as no man, no not the angels of heaven, but my father only. He's telling us here that it's useless and irrelevant. It's useless and unprofitable setting dates. Saying it's going to come this particular day or this particular month. It just tells us, get ready. It will come at a time you're not expecting. That day, that hour, that time, that moment, the date, nobody knows but my father who is in heaven. It says in verse 37, But as the days of Noah, so also shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Noah had announced, because God had told him that a great event was going to happen. That judgment was coming upon the earth. And that only those who are ready, only those who are prepared, will escape that judgment. He announced it to his world. He announced it to the people around him. But many of the people did not take what he said seriously. And Jesus is saying in the same way as it was in the time of Noah. Even so it shall be at the time of the coming of the Son of Man. He says in verse 38. For as in the days that were before the flood. They were eating and drinking. They were marrying and giving in marriage. Nothing wrong in eating, nothing wrong in uh, drinking. But that was their preoccupation. That was the totality of their lives. They were living for food. They were living for physical things. They were living for things on earth. And Jesus said, as it was at that time, marrying and giving in marriage, all they could think about those days, the pleasures of the flesh. And the things in marriage, having children, raising children. It says that's what they were doing. They were preoccupied in until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And he knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Listen to this sobre statement at the end of verse 39, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. It says already we have a, an event that wants us, an event that should judge us, an event that will tell us we need to prepare. It happened to them. And Jesus said so in such a way, in such manner. And the same way it surprised those people and that flood came to them unannounced. It will happen. So shall it be 
so shall the coming of the son of man be verse 42 watch therefore and for ye know not what hour your lord does come he calls us to watchfulness verse 44 therefore be also ready that's the readiness we're talking about this is a message christ himself will want us to meditate on to pray on and to examine our lives and to find out how ready am i how prepared am i for the coming of the lord for the young and for the old because that coming will come for everyone verse 44 therefore the word therefore is means that means because of all this that i've said and because of what is going to happen and because of the danger of not being ready and because of the perdition that will come on the people that are not ready therefore be ye also ready for in such an hour as you think not when you are thinking i don't think it will be today i don't think it will be this time i think the way things are now the lord you might have some reasons in your mind why you think he cannot come now it cannot be this period that's why he says in that verse 44 he says in such an hour as you think not the son of man cometh he calls us to watchfulness mark chapter 13 in Mark chapter 13, reading from verse 28, here you'll find that Mark, by inspiration, is telling us the same thing. But he looks another at another perspective here. Mark chapter 13, reading from verse 38, 28 rather, Mark 13, 28. Now learn a parable of the fig tree when her branch is yet tender and put her forth leaves you know that summer is near the lord was giving his uh, explanation illustration to those that were his immediate audience immediate congregation there were farmers most of them and they knew that the season uh, could easily be predicted at what was happening to their crops and so he told them when you see that the branch is yet tender and is putting on leaves then you know from experience you know from observation you know from all the things that have been happening that the summer is near then he says so ye in like manner when ye shall see these things come to pass that is all the events I've been talking about concerning church, concerning religion, concerning nations, concerning all the events on the sea, the waves of the sea, the roaring of the sea, and concerning all the earthquakes. It says, when you hear those things happening, then you know that it is near even at the door. And as you listen to things happening around you, you will know that the coming of the Lord is 